Welcome to the Abundant Talk Show, where we are inspiring you to tap into your power to manifest the happiness, success, and fulfillment that you desire. I am your host, Niaje, the Upper Limit Coach. I am here to dismantle your limiting beliefs and remove the blocks so you can confidently live your life's purpose, because life is meant to be abundant. Hey, m and Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Show. Today, I am joined by Sarah Bruno, and she is the founder of Head Heart Therapy. And before we get into what that is, what does abundance mean to you? What does abundance mean to me? Um, it's, the, it's absolutely the way that I live my life. I am not into scarcity, into competition. I think there's enough for everybody. And so abundance is, I'm, I'm always thinking about um, connecting. Like that's my number one thing. I think my superpower is like connecting people who need to be connected with each other. And I, I find that to be an abundance practice that repays me a, like a million fold. So yeah, abundance is everything. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's one of the things we focus on is not having a scarcity mindset on right. this show. It's really, mm-hmm. really important. So we are actually here at the podcast movement convention and 2019. <laughs> a mutual friend connected us and I'm so glad that they did and when I first saw her the first thing that I noticed was her crystal earrings so I'm just like I know I know we have some good stuff to talk about so tell us about you tell us what heart head heart therapy is yeah. and how you got started so I am a psychotherapist and an addictions counselor and so head heart therapy is a group practice for therapists in, in Chicago so there are, I think, 10 of us now, and we, we serve a lot of people who struggle with addiction issues as well as, you know, anxiety, depression, eating disorders, all sorts of things. And I do, I founded that company, but I do a little bit of everything. <laughs> so I run Head Heart Therapy. I also teach at a couple of universities. I teach about addiction to, um, to young social workers. I'm a social worker by trade. Uh, and we also do, I'm a Reiki master, I sing in a band on the weekends, and I'm super into crystals and all of that shit. Can I say shit? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. Because <laughs> I cuss a lot. I forgot to, we forgot to mention it. Yes. Um, oh, and I have a podcast. What am I thinking? The most important thing to not forget, because we're at a podcast conference. Um, my podcast is called Conversations with the Wounded Healer. And so I interview other people in caregiving professions about doing your own work while taking care of other people. Yeah, that's so important. That's yeah. so important. So what inspired you to get into this work? My crazy family. I mean, truthfully, if a therapist isn't honest about the fact that they went in this field to fix themselves, they're lying. <laughs> because... I mean, we all come by this honestly, right? So my family was fucked up, but really from the outside, you couldn't necessarily tell. Um, My mom was the adult child of an alcoholic. My dad was a narcissist, and everything had to look perfect all the time. My mom was in, in church, and so being like Jesus was what you were supposed to do. And the shame that gets created in a household like that, where you can't tell any secrets outside of the family, um, my shame was just astronomical. And so it's something that I'd always wanted to do, but didn't, didn't know how. And I was, I was doing arts administration because singing, singing was the first thing I knew I was good at. So I was like, well, I, I'm being a famous singer. is just not practical. So I would work in the arts. So I was working in arts administration and had a therapist. And at the time she said, you know, it's only a two year degree. And I was like, bye. <laughs> and so got my master's in social work and I was really inspired to work with people who struggle with addiction because I feel like they are, when they're in recovery, they're trying to be the best version of themselves. And that's what I want to surround myself with is people who are constantly working on that because that's how I move through the world and I want to be surrounded by other people who do the same. Yeah, I love it. So what would you say was some of the things that you did to come out of that shame? Because I feel like that's a lot of people, and, and even yeah. just with social media, people are yep. struggling in silence, but they, right. their lives look perfect on social media. So how did right. you come out of that that vibration? Yeah, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say come out of it. So um, are you familiar with Brene Brown? Of course. Okay, so I'm trained in her shame resilience work, okay. 
Okay. I saw her speak in 2009, literally like the day after I finished my classes for social work, and I've, I've followed her ever since, and so when I first saw her speak, I was like, A, I want you to fix me, and B, I want to be just like you, <laughs> right? So um, I, I, I did the work, you know, and, and her shame resilience curriculum was really important. Um, and then building on that, she really focuses on empathy being the antidote to shame. I think for those of us who really struggle with chronic shame, self-compassion is the key because it doesn't matter what you say to me. If I'm saying shitty things to myself, it's not going to make a dent in it. So self-compassion is huge. Uh, I also, um, I don't like to call myself a Buddhist because I don't feel I'm qualified to do so, but I'm very... I'm very aligned with Buddhist philosophy, and so all of, all of the ideas that surround that really help me work through shame because it's, I feel like Buddhism has a very good understanding of people are flawed, people struggle, and that's a normal part of life, and how do we, how do we work through this without just saying like, oh, I'm a sinner, and I have to ask somebody else to take that sin away from me, so that's, that's been really huge for me. Have you ever seen that chart of like the different frequencies or like vibrations? Because I know like shame is like one. Of oh them. wait, what is it? What's it called? It's um. I don't the know. The power of. Oh fuck! What's that book? <laughs> I read that book and I was like, holy shit! Yeah, yes, it's in, shame is the lowest. Yeah, so yeah. shame and guilt is like a really yeah. low vibration. Yeah. And so trying to raise your vibration mm -hmm. to joy, mm -hmm. to love, and yep. you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then a, a light enlightenment is the highest one. Yes. So power if, versus force. Mm, That's yes. what the book is yes. called. So if you were dealing with someone that was in that low frequency, mm -hmm. what what are some ways that, you know, if they can't go through Brene's Brown program, for example, mm -hmm. what are some ways you would recommend them pulling themselves out of that low vibration, raising their vibration? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think community is super important. Having people around you, because empathy is the initial antidote to shame, having people around you who can understand what you're going through and not try to fix it, I think that's a huge mistake that a lot of people make. Like if you share something sad with me, it's uncomfortable for me to sit with that and if I can't fix it because a lot of our, our own self-worth is based on what I can give to you, you know, how valuable I am in the world. Um, but we need people to just sit with it. So I think community is important. I don't think we can do this work in isolation. So that would be my first tip. And I guess secondly then, cultivating the willingness to practice self-compassion. I think that affirmations are bullshit. Oh! Yeah. I didn't expect her to say that. Did you I see know. my face with that? I know. Oh. This is why. Because the affirmation doesn't also hold the part that, that feels true, right? So if you're feeling bad about yourself, right? Like, like let's say you, you made some sort of mistake with, online, right? And you're like, oh my God, people are going to think I'm an idiot, right? If you just give yourself an affirmation, you're not actually giving space to that feeling of being, of being bad. And that space needs feeling to move. It needs space to move through so that you can release it. Yeah. When we're just putting affirmations on top of it, it's just a, it's just a symptom fix yeah. rather than an actual like getting at the root of the problem. Yeah. So this is why I mean I, I think everybody should go to therapy because a therapist can really help kind of you know okay these are my symptoms but how do I get underneath what's causing this? Shame is what causes it, right? And so how do we how do we continually work towards um, shame resilience and self compassion? So the other piece of this is I I, I hear a lot of people who feel like everybody else deserves it, but I don't deserve self-compassion. That seems to be like a pretty common issue for people with shame. And the question that I ask it, because I do groups a lot, so I'll ask in the group, you know, so does any, is there anybody in here who doesn't deserve love and belonging? And of course, everybody would be like, no, everybody deserves it. So like, how could you be the one person who doesn't deserve it? And if you can at least buy into that idea, then there's a little bit of space open for self-compassion. And it starts by changing the language of the way that you talk to yourself. So we have to recognize the way that we're talking to ourselves, and that's something that we don't necessarily often do. You know, we just kind of go. So I'm a huge proponent of meditation, because meditation is gonna build those neural pathways so that you have that like capacity to look outside of self. So meditate, 
meditate, meditate, <laughs> meditate, meditate, meditate. Um, it's the one thing I like force people to try, try to force people to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think community, meditation, willingness to open to the idea of self-compassion and holding at the same time that you are going to feel bad about yourself sometimes. And that's okay. That's normal. If you never felt bad about yourself, you would be a sociopath or a narcissist and nobody would like you. So <laughs> if you have bad feelings about yourself, you're in good company. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do, I do love affirmations, but if you only have affirmations, yes. it's a band-aid. Yes. You know, it's masking exactly. the problem. And yes. I think there's a lot of spiritual bypassing right now yes, where people exactly. are just like, I can't have any negative thoughts. I can't have anything negative right. around. And I, I think that it takes practice to be able to yes. be around, you know, a negative situation and not allow it to lower your vibrations. But well, we can't have a high vibration all the time. True. Right. Like, yeah. and, and, and just knowing that I think, you know, the, the idea that we have, if we had a high vibration before we have capacity to do that again mm -hmm. and not beating ourselves up for when we go down because when you're sick your vibration goes down when you drink your vibration goes down like you know all of these things that that are just going to happen and and we shouldn't shame ourselves or feel bad about that Abundance Box is more than a subscription box. It's a movement. Not only are you sent spiritual goodies to your doorstep, it's a commitment to yourself to not settle, to live to your full potential and manifest the life that you truly desire. For more information, go to AbundanceHack.com forward slash box to receive crystals, sage, therapeutic grade essential oils, guided meditations, and access to the private Facebook group to connect with other awesome members of the Abundance Box tribe. Join the movement because life is meant to be abundant. I think it's really powerful what you said as well about not trying to fix it when people come to you. So like holding space, yeah. like holding space for people to be able to talk because sometimes they don't want you to fix it. Like a lot of times mm -hmm. we have to fix ourselves. So just holding that space without judgment for someone just to express how they're feeling. That's really important. Yeah, I was at dinner with some folks last night and one woman told a story and the woman who responded was a therapist and she's like, so are you looking for um, for compassion or solutions? Mm, that's a great question. Great question to ask people if somebody shares something with you, like what is it that you need from me right now? That's what I usually ask. Like if my husband is venting, what would you like, what would you like from me? Do you want to help? Do you want me to beat someone up? <laughs> I don't beat people up, but I say that I will. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. <laughs> if you are listening, you have to tune into the video so you can see her awesome mohawk. It is purple and pink and green and so, blue. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> the last time I got my hair done, I decided that I was going to model it after crystals. So this is fluorite. Oh, can't, it's, my it's faded. Goodness. I have to get it done again on Sunday. But I, I it's love fluorite. it even more now. Right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm in love with yeah. your hair. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so <laughs> I'm like, let me focus now. Okay, so your your company, mm -hmm. Head Heart Therapy? Yes. So what what's your mission statement for that? Like what Unique, your goal? unique therapy for unique people is the tagline. I love that. Yeah, because I don't look like your typical therapist and the clients who originally came to me would, would say that. They'd say, I feel like you're going to understand me better because you have colored hair or because you have a nose ring or tattoos or whatever. So we really try to cultivate a space where everyone feels really seen and heard and understood. Um, you know, we also, I, I had everyone trained in Reiki a couple weeks ago, so everyone understands energy healing. We had an anti-racism training because that's really important to me to, to be anti-racist. You know, we all share our pronouns because we want to, you know, be a safe space for LGBTQ and, and plus, 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 plus. Um, so that, that's the mission is really everyone is welcome. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Thanks. Okay, so... Do you do any like online group stuff or is it just in person? Just in person. Uh, I'm trying to figure out part of what I came to the conference for was figuring out how do I how do I do marketing in a different way? And one of the things I've been considering is what's my product? You know, what can I even give people? And so maybe maybe groups is online groups is a, a way to do that. So I don't know. 
stay tuned. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Because it, it's interesting, you know, the, you know, owning your own business, you're always working. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, how do I balance my life? How do I do the things that I really want to do, but I still have to manage my business because that's what actually funds all these things. Because this shit ain't free, guys. <laughs> shit ain't free. We don't get paid for it. We're trying to. But it's hard. It's a really hard yeah. business. And so... I'm just, I'm trying to balance all the time. Yeah. And what, what's the name of your podcast? Conversations with a Wounded Healer. Okay. Yes. So, Conversations with a Wounded Healer. Definitely check that out. I love everything that you're about. So, I have to know, what is your favorite crystal? My favorite crystal? I feel like it changes from time to time. Lapidolite was was one that I was really working with last year. I went through some business trauma and... That one, like, being all about self-love, like, I just carried it with me all the time. Right now, I'm into Super 7. Do you know the Super 7 crystal? Okay. I don't even know all the crystals that go into it, but it's um, it's a combination of amethyst, clear quartz, other words I can't say. I can't remember. But just look, if you look up Super 7, it's, it's essentially seven different. Yeah crystals together and it's supposed to be like super great for like spiritual growth and that's I'm kind of in this stage right now where I know I'm on the precipice of healing some really deep transgenerational trauma with shame truthfully um and so that crystal like I've got one in my little box with my podcast cards and I've got a bigger one at home that I meditate with so that's what I'm into right now but it it changes right because it depends on what you need at the given time yeah there's, What's yours? There's one. So I just purchased. A, I want to say it's called Augate. I don't know, but it's something 23, and it's supposed to be 23 different crystals. That's my newest one, and it looks like an amethyst. So it's like it's purple. But so when I saw it, I was like, "This is an amethyst," Hi. and he's like, "No, it's not. It's you know, this has like all these other oh my god in there, yeah." So it's 23. So I'm going to look up yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven is one of my favorite numbers. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All seven men will watch them fall. <laughs> Prince, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> so, yeah, I love amethyst. My whole mm-hmm. living room, like the theme is amethyst. Mm-hmm. I have a huge amethyst theme. The first Oh, nice. Aquarius. Yay. I love it. So I get along really well with Aquarius. Like all my best friends have been like Aquarius. Yeah? Yeah. When's your birthday? In January. Okay. So we got corn. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I can sit here and talk to you forever, but I Thank know you. that we have limited time. So what are your top three tips for living an abundant life? Ooh, top three tips for living an abundant life. Um I don't remember, did I say about did I talk about connecting already? Or were you talking about that? Yes, I did. I already said that first. So top three tips of living an abundant life. Um you get what you give. I mean, I think that's just, like, that's it. It's That's just the, the one. Um, and I always, I try to be aware of what my motivations are, like, underneath certain feelings. Like, what's happening for me right now? And there, there are definitely times where I've been in spaces where I start to feel jealousy or envy. And that's not abundant, right? That would be the opposite of abundance. And so when I'm feeling that way, I try to really check in with what's going on. And it's fear. Right? It's fear of there not being enough space for me and this other person who's doing something great as well. And so I really just have to kind of tune back into that. And I I really do hold the belief that there is enough for everybody. And I guess sometimes I forget. And so just continuing to, to remind myself and and to like give myself compassion for being afraid because that's, again, like a human experience. And so it's okay to do that. So... Yeah, I just, I, that's, that's just how I roll. So I guess it's only two, but I'm not a very good, like, bullet point person. So maybe I should work on that. I don't know. Give us feedback. Let me know. So where can people find you online? My website is www.headhearttherapy.com, and the podcast is on there too. So it's headhearttherapy.com slash podcast to check it out. And the podcast is on, you know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those fun places. I'm going to try to start doing, like, Facebook Lives, and Insta- our Instagram is Head Heart Therapy, and my dog, we were talking about our dogs earlier, my dog is this derpy little dachshund, and I've always thought he should be famous, because he's just ridiculous His looking. face, he's, he's so cute. His face. So I started making memes, like, therapy memes out of him, and I think it's brilliant, I'm just going to say. So, find me on Instagram, like all of Oscar's posts, 
<laughs> I love it. Oh, I wish we had Oscar here. But check out the video and we will insert some photos. So <laughs> Yes, good, good. Yay. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank it has you. been a pleasure. I'm so glad we were connected. Me I too. love your hair. Love it so much. <laughs> and she also has on purple highlight, you guys. Like literally she's fabulous from head to toe. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I will have all of her links in the show notes. And until next time, love and light. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Tax Show. I would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and questions. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our yummy episodes. Every time you leave a five-star rating or review, I do my happy dance. <laughs>